Hey everyone. Recently I've been using this website quite often. Um, it's called IC Tools and specifically their Discover page. And what it what it shows you is a list of the NFT projects that are currently being minted that have just launched or maybe they launched yesterday, but they're still minting. Um, and so it gives a very nice overview of what's currently being launched in nfts and i thought it would be fun to have uh, a scraper to parse the data from this page and then to use it as a foundation for some other tool and so that's what i did initially i had this python script um, that does just that. It basically just parses this page and then presents the data um, with some additional details that I thought might be useful. And so you just go and run the script and it will um, parse the page, query the blockchain a few times, and then you get this uh, overview, um, which you don't have on IC tools and what I wanted to add here is the balance of the contracts for the NFT collection, just to see which contracts are have been doing well, as opposed to others, or maybe just to spot which are minting for free. Um, but then I thought, wouldn't it be more interesting to actually have a tool that would provide the similar utility as IC tools discover page, but instead of using the complex infrastructure of something like IC tools, where they really need to make sure that it scales, that it's reliable, instead of doing that, what if one could just run it on a local computer without having to set up any databases or any web servers and on top of it, would that be possible to achieve using just the data that we have in the blockchain? And so that's what I attempted to, to do. And uh, that's what I'm gonna walk you through um, on, in this video. And then after explaining how it works, we'll actually run the monitor and see what, what data we get back. So it's a pretty straightforward Python script, just 100 lines of code. Um, it establishes a WebSocket connection to an Ethereum node. In this case, I'm using Infura. You might need to replace this with your own Infura ID. You can get one for free when you sign up on their website. Um, what it does is after connecting to the node, it sends a JSON RPC request to listen to all transfer events from a null address, from that zero address to another address, which means that we're not interested in the NFT transfers from one guy to another. We're only interested in mint transactions when a token has just been minted. And so this is how we can do that using a Bloom filter here. I've uh, covered how um, event topics in Ethereum work in more detail in another video. I'm going to leave a link in the description below in case you guys are interested. But moving forward, after we uh, establish a connection and we start listening to those, uh, to those events, we then parse the token ID from our uh, payload. And again, uh, the token ID here is just the fourth topic in our log. It has an index of three, and that's how we are getting it from here. And then uh, we just have to convert the hexadecimal version to, uh, to a decimal. And that's how we get our token ID. 
And then we, what we do then is we, we're only interested in new NFT collections. So we're not interested in an NFT token number um, 3,500 that have just been minted. We're only interested in the collections that have just launched. Uh, we want to be early. We want to spot those new mints. And that's why we're uh, filtering down on top uh, to only we want to make sure that we're only interested, we're only targeting the token IDs beyond five and under 300. Beyond five is because some NFTs are just one of ones and we don't really care about those. We only want the collections of NFTs. And this one is kind of an arbitrary uh, token ID that, you know, given that an, on average a collection has from five to 10,000 being before 300, is still early, but you can play with this more. You can, you can, of course, you know, decrease it to 10 or even have it uh, higher than, let's say under a thousand, but I'm just gonna live it like this for now. So after that, we grab our contract address and uh, we check if the contract address is already in our, because let's say um, we received 10 mints but all 10 are from the same contract address. We don't want to clog our logs with 10 similar collections. So we make sure that if the collection is, if we haven't heard of this collection before, only then do we want to move forward. And if we already have that in our contracts array, which is defined here, if we already have it there, then we just pass to the next iteration. So once that's established, once we know for sure that this is a new contract, this is a new collection, we then create an instance of our contract with a, a minimum, well, with a stripped down ABI. Uh, this is not the, you know, every contract is specific in a way, but every NFT contract has to conform to the ERC-721 standard, which means that in almost all of the cases, the contract responds to a method called name and it responds to a method called token URI. And those are the two things that we want from our from, to read from the blockchain. We wanna know what, what's the name of the collection without pinging OpenSea or any third party API, we just wanna know how this collection is called. And then we wanna grab the token URI in case you then wanna request it and then grab your um, metadata with the image URL. Let's say you wanna show it on your front end. Um, so we wanna store that too. We wanna to store the token URI, at least for, 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 for now. So we then grab the name and the token URI. In case there's any errors, we just wanna we don't want to bother with it. We just want to, you know, skip the name and token URI and move on to the next um, collection. So that's why we have it like this. After we after we do that, we want to query the blockchain and get the balance for that contract address. We want to know how much ETH has accumulated on that contract. And then we do some conversion to convert the, the the balance to ETH instead of having them in in way or um, basically instead of having a bunch of zeros, we want to make sure that the balance is readable. And then we grab the wallet address of the person who minted this particular token, just for the, just for reference. And then we grab the transaction hash also just we, want, we just want to have it included in our in our logs. And then what we do is we open this CSV file. We then write the transaction hash, our contract address, the balance of the contract, the name of the collection, the token URI, the minter address, and the current timestamp. And we also add our contract to our contracts uh, array so that we don't duplicate this contract uh, in the CSV file later on. And, uh, and, and then, yeah, and as long as the script is running, that's what it's gonna do. It's gonna be listening on new mint transactions. 
and then recording those that uh, are new, that are you know that conform to this, uh, conform to this uh, um, limits. So let's try how this works and let's see if it, uh, let's see what it does. So if you go ahead and run Python, and again, you're gonna need to install uh, these dependencies like ETH API, uh, async IO, Web3. You can do that by running pip install and then just pass in the list of uh, all of those dependencies. I've already done it. So I already have that installed. So I'm just gonna run the monitor.py and see what we get. So you can see that the, it immediately created the contracts.csv file with the headers, but so far it hasn't added any uh, new collections. So this is the first one already. It's called all right, all right, all right, beers. Here is the token URI. This is the address of the person who minted. This is the current timestamp. And this is the second one, businessman X. Again, we have all the data that we wanted. And of course you can build a front end that will present this in a more user-friendly way. Of course, you can, instead of storing this in a CSV, you can actually store this into uh, a Redis database or, or a My, MySQL database. Um, that was not the purpose of this video. That's why I try to keep this as simple as possible. Um, the purpose here was to demonstrate how listening on specific events in the blockchain works. And then as far as uh, the UX, you can actually do anything you want as long as it fits you. You can, as long as you have the data here, you can derive all the necessary information. You can ping the OpenSea API to get the floor price. You could um, scrape the IC tools for any particular collection to get any other information that you want. But uh, for now, it's just, recording them in CSV. And if you're really interested in, let's say we wanna know what these businessmen X mm -hmm. are, you can just copy the contract address. And then if you go to opensea.io and you just paste it in the search bar, you can immediately see that this is our collection. This is the one that our monitor just logged. And uh, indeed they have just had 44 mints and the mint, yeah, most likely this was the transaction that we spotted. So um, that's pretty much it. This is a, kind of a stripped down version of IC tools discover using just the blockchain as our database and um, making sure that we're on top of the new NFT launches I'm gonna leave the link to the code in the GitHub repository below. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, I will see you in the next one.